because otherwise they're not going to hear it. It's the same fact, no matter who says it. Right. But I have to say, no, this is this is endorsed and backed by the, you know this organization or by the you know this particular you know, specialist. So just to make sure, I mean, and, and you can't ever say if you're going to be promoting science, we are under so many strict rules that religion is not. I mean, I've seen religious apologists. I mean, last week I saw one. The guy made like seven or eight videos about me in a span of two, three days. And in every single one of them, he lied about me multiple times. He said things he knew was not true and that he couldn't verify that I can prove are all false. But Shocking. that's okay for religion. <laughs> I can't make a single mistake. Well, I, I can make a mistake. Only if I if I if I clarify it later on, but I can't ever lie, the way they right. lie constantly. I can't lie once. <laughs> if it's one time, one time they show that I said something, and if they can prove that it's false, and that I knew it was false when I said it, I'm done. You know, career over. Because this is all about you know how how we how we evaluate honestly. Now religion can lie every day, all day. They matter of fact, that's all religion is. Right. Making up things you you know, pretending to know things you don't know, which is dishonest. Asserting facts that are not facts, which are dishonest. Misrepresenting facts, which of course deliberately lies. Nothing but lies. But if the scientist, if a if a science communicator says one thing that they, they can show that is both wrong and I knew it was wrong, and I'm trying to deceive people, I'm done. Yeah, you're held to a much higher standard to them. Which I, I don't know offense, you should be. You should be held to a higher standard. Um, but Agreed. like you, yeah. But like they, like you said. Um, they're so fluent at lying, it's so prevalent with them, nobody cares anymore. Oh, such and such lied. Okay, whatever. Welcome to another Monday, you know? Yeah, then nobody cares. Like you see it, we see it in our culture all the time. I mean, from the administration down, throughout our throughout media. I mean, like, you know, you, you, you watch certain, say, news stations, and and, yeah, and and you'll see people say things, and then they, they'll, they'll say, well, no, this isn't this isn't true at all, and then a second later, they're handed the memo that, no, this is true. and Well, it's true, but so what? You know, the, the bullshit excuse. We, there's never an, an admission that you were wrong, right? That, you, hey, I shouldn't have said this one, you know. Oh, no. No, no, no oh, that no. doesn't happen. And then, you know, we have people in high levels of government. I'm not just talking about the highest level. I'm talking about throughout our government, because I'm in Texas. Every level of our government here, from state and federal, we've got people who lie regularly where you can show that, hey, what you just said here, you said here earlier that you already knew about this fact that proves you wrong here. So what the hell? What, yeah. Why are you? And you're just saying things. You don't have you don't have any source for this. You're just stating it as a fact. You don't say that I believe something. You just said it was like it was true. Like it's you didn't think that it was true. And then when you're called on it, you say, well, I, that's what somebody told me. That's what I read. So? That doesn't mean that that doesn't change the fact that you expressed it as if it were true, which means that you had to verify it first. Right. But we don't we don't live in a world anymore where any, anyone has to be accountable for the things that they say. I, I don't think they and do. It's very disturbing for me. This is where we, this we live in a world where people get to make up their own reality. And so people who know the Earth is a sphere will pretend that it's flat because it's fun to pretend that it's flat and make a bunch of videos where they get to pretend that it's flat. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't. I don't think they do validate it sometimes, though, because I've rendered an instance where, um, like, when I was talking to, to Ken Hoven, and I'm like explaining to him, "Hey, this this claim that you have in this particular handbook is clearly wrong," and his excuse was he got it from somewhere else, as if somehow that removes the the due diligence he had to do to go check on it, and it gives him some sort of plausible deniability. He thinks, and I'm like, "How does that? Is that how, how does that work?" Is that um, <laughs> um, I saw a video, um, Aaron, where you went to the Texas. Um, I believe it was the House video um, where they were voting on the, um, I guess, broadening teachers' ability to. Um, yeah, that's, discuss. that's one way to spin it. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> ability to yeah. make up bullshit and teach that as, you teach lies yes. is true. Yes, that's my favorite thing. But I, I, there were like three people who got up there that were in favor of the bill. Um, that just when when the guy was asking the question, you could tell that they were deliberately running circles around the questions that were being answered. It was cringe. To not be able to admit Total what cringe. they knew was correct. Exactly. And there's a big, I, I encourage everybody to go and watch this video because there's a point where when you come up, it's like a completely different climate in the room, you know, because you don't hold back in that video. You you let it um, fly. And I think that it's it was refreshing for everybody. You just kind of see people's face like. Well, I think a lot of people were thinking that and he spoke it. 
right? I, th- I, you, I, I want to yeah. address that, too, because a lot of people will give me hell for being uh, a, a firebrand, so to speak, oh, or love- for being you know too blunt or what have you. But think about that day. If you watch that video, and I think it, I, I titled it Aaron, Aaron Raw in the House in the or house. something like that, mm-hmm. Aaron in the House. We'll link and so it. I'm giving a testimony, but it's not just my testimony in the video. You hear other people speaking, too. Now, there were a couple of people who were speaking on behalf of mainstream science, but they, they were speaking in defense of mainstream science, but they were not scientists. Right. For whatever reason, we didn't have any actual scientists that were able to assemble to show up there. So we had a couple of laymen who were not trained or especially skilled in talking about this subject, and they didn't know their enemy very well. <laughs> and that's another problem because if you're not if you're not immersed in this, you're not really you don't really know what you're up against. Right. Right. And and too often you'll think, well, oh, these people just don't know what the facts are. No, no, it's not that they don't know. It's that they know and they know they're lying. Right. And they have an agenda behind lying. Absolutely. So so you, you, I'm I was the only guy that went up against three professional speakers from Liberty University and from some other creationist organization, and then, of course, you know, from within our own government. I think there was another another uh, House representative or something up there. That and a lawyer. Testified. And so how, how does the one person who is familiar with this argument you know, deal not only with the, when I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't mean to speak ill of, uh, of people that, are, that, that want, to, want to defend science, but I mean, these people didn't Honestly, they didn't know what they were talking about, and they weren't they weren't the people who speak to speak on this. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm appreciate I appreciate that they did, but what we really needed to have, and we didn't have on that particular day, was actual professional representatives of scientific organizations. So what you had was a, a couple of amateurs who didn't know what they were talking about, and me. And I'm not a professional scientist either, but I've spent the last 20 years of my life immersed in this argument. I know exactly what's going on, and so. I all of the weight comes down on my shoulders to take on, you know, the Discovery Institute and Liberty University and all of this. So well, it, it. I get two minutes to speak. My two minutes had better have potency because it's it the is. only two minutes our side has. All right. Why didn't why did why do you think more um, uh, scientists wouldn't come to? No, I'm not um, saying they wouldn't. Very often, you don't get a whole lot of forewarning for these things. Okay. And. Gotcha. Too often, when, when you it, a professional scientist has a much different perspective than I do. Here's where I sure. here's where I, I distinguish myself from them. Professional scientists deal with other scientists. Right. They don't deal with lawyers or politicians, and that's what creationists are. Exactly. So exactly. They don't realize. I mean, the, the scientists will know what the facts are, and they'll think that anybody else that knows what the facts are will be. And I was naive enough to believe this once upon a time myself. That if I if I were to go to the board of education and I hear these people saying these false things, well, I would just show them what the truth is. And I'm I'm, I'm telling you, it, it was like as recently as 2005. I still believe this. That if I were just to show them what the truth is, they would say, "Oh, my bad, my mistake. I'll change the policy then." Because you would be compelled. <laughs> you would you would not deliberately lie to students in a classroom. You, would you wouldn't think. lie to other people's kids if you knew that you would it, it was a lie. But I encountered people on a board of education who would deliberately I admitted, and admitted it. I had a, a, an opponent in a debate, I think it was in 2005, who admitted to me in writing before moderators, because this was a written debate that was recorded online, and I recently got the copies of this. There was somebody managed to extrapolate, somebody managed to get almost the entire debate that was lost for years and just get, sent it to me an email like a week ago. Oh, great. And I'm delighted about this, so I'm going to be able to. I'm going to make that public. But I had this debate with this guy, wherein he admitted that he knew there were transitional species in the fossil record, but he wanted to teach students there were none because he said it was important that they believe there are none. What? So what? it's important to believe a lie that you know is a lie. So you're going. You admit that you're going to lie to other people's kids. I can't even wrap my head around that. How is that? How is that a thing? How, like, that's, how is that? that's what religion is. It's manipulation of the masses. It's getting people to believe. It is make believe. It's not about truth. I often said in my videos that, that creationism is not and does not like the truth. Absolutely not. Absolutely. I just like to me it um, it it just I can't wrap my mind around the fact that somebody would 
and somebody who is teaching, like their their number one priority should be the well being and the education of those that they're instructing. And what Why is education? You, I mean, education is where you're preparing somebody to understand the world that they're about to take over. Exactly. And that they better understand it if they're going to take the helm from the previous generation. Exactly. But at some point, we decided that they don't need to understand it. They just need to believe whatever we want to pretend to believe, whatever we would rather believe, regardless whether it's true or not. I had a conversation. I've had, I've, I've had this conversation many, many times over, but I had it again, I swear it was yesterday where someone admitted to me that it doesn't matter if the things that they believe are actually true, they believe them because they want to. <laughs> How do you justify that? How That's do you... what the religious position is. Well, well, why can't, if it's, so what if it's fairy tales? Can't I believe in fairy tales? Because that makes me happy. No! No, no stupid! You can't. Did you, just... did you hear the, in the news about the Illinois? Was, I think it was Illinois that had, um, they were teaching creationism in school, and they, like openly, um, and they, it, 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 this was a public school, it wasn't like a private school or something like that, but it was, they were telling kids that basically, uh, you know, 7,000 years ago, man was walking with dinosaurs, and of course, the the educated parents got a oh, hold of this, no. and all hell broke loose, as well as it should. Um, yeah. And I think I think that every one of those people involved, every teacher, every superintendent, uh, everyone that was ever involved in that should be gone, voted out, done, whatever. There should be a policy to get people that are incompetent for their positions the hell out. Yes, you would not hire a history teacher that that doesn't know history. That, that changed. <laughs> I'm I'm really hoping that what you just said is is a prophecy that will be fulfilled in 2018 and 2020. I'm really crossing my fingers on that. Oh. Please, I mean I. What okay? Uh, um, uh, uh, Steve just brought up a, a really good segue um, back to kind of where we started, which was um, the the arc and on Ken Ham's arc, which is the you know the big mega structure supposed to be to the T. What the arc was? <laughs> how <laughs> the hundred million dollar monstrosity? Exactly what we don't know. I had sure. Okay, let's go with that. Can, you can we start with the keel? <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just talk about the keel for a moment. His boat has a keel. It's a boat, right? It has a it has a bow and it has a keel, and a, uh, and and a, even a, a rudder. Although the rudder doesn't move, it's a big, huge fixed yeah. thing. But so we're talking about a vehicle that that is literally a box. It's described as a box in the Bible. I mean, it's an ark. That's literally a box, right? And it's going to sit on the ground and hold all these animals in it. And then when the water comes, it'll float up. So it's going to start from a flat ground position. So it doesn't Makes need to keel there, right? And it's going to float around, and then and when all the water's gone, it's going to land back down on the flat ground. Well, how, how many feet is the keel? I mean, how big is the keel? Well, just, just think about why the keel would exist, because the Bible doesn't mention it, right? Because, right. of course, the Bible wouldn't mention a keel. Why, the, why would it have a keel? It right. doesn't have a means of propulsion, and it doesn't have a means of steering. What the hell is the keel for? <laughs> did, did they mention metal, metal brackets in the Bible, too? Oh yeah, all those air conditioning enforcement beams. What what I really love, what I really love is that originally, initially, they had this beautifully inspirational idea that they were going to house a zoo inside oh. the ark. Now they would have never got that, permits for that. Sure those animals would have been dead by the end of the day. That, <laughs> the first idea of that had it had to be so inspirational to all these believers, all these you know misty eyed. Oh, that would be so wonderful <laughs> that the, the children would come and see all these animals. They would have hundreds and hundreds of animals all, all of the on the ark, and it would be wonderful. And then they realized immediately the critical flaw with that. Yep, there's not enough ventilation. It would right. smell so bad, it would be impossible the to Bible even take says care of them. there was one window. <laughs> yeah. Was it at the, top, at the top, supposedly? A small yeah. little, yeah. Oh, yeah. You had eight people, and you have to imagine them with snow shovels, climbing up these, <laughs> climbing up the ladder to I, this I one even, window. I can't yeah, even I mean, imagine so you, that. It, it would be methane poisoning in the first day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but they he death by cow farts. He has dinosaurs in the in the ark. Like yeah, but he doesn't yeah. have any tritylodonts. Why? Because he never heard of them. Because they were a form of, of proto mammal cynodont that died out in the Triassic period, and they would they would they was virtually mammals, and Noah would have seen none of them. Would have had no knowledge of them. So Ken Ham has admitted in previous interviews that he knows what the evidence is. And he doesn't care. Oh, I think he's outright just a dishonest person. I don't think he cares one way or another. 
I don't think he does care at all. My my wife brought this to my attention. She said this was the moment when she 